Are you getting ready to go back to school? Need some way to keep track of all of that information that you're going to be getting? Need some way to record what your kid's doing in homeschooling? OneNote might just be the answer for you. Stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Well, hi everybody. I'm Crystal from A Crystal Clear Life where we focus on planning, organizing, and living a more simplified life. And I use OneNote to do a lot of that simplifying, let me tell you. Well, with August here and everybody talking about going back to school, my heart is always just a little bit sad. I have been an educator for about 35 years and when I see the back to school sales and the kids getting ready to go back to school, I get a little sad because I'm not going to be a part of it anymore. Aww. Anyway, well, I wanted to share with you a few things that might help you keep your kids organized uh, as they go back to school. Now, being a homeschooler for the last 20 some years, I'm going to give you some perspective on homeschooling, but the tips that I'm offering today will also work for students who are going to regular school as well. So let's go over to the computer and I'll show you how I use OneNote to do some record keeping for homeschooling. For those of you who are not familiar with OneNote, let me quick go over the hierarchy so that uh, you have an idea of how the notebooks are set up. The first part is notebooks. Think of these as like three ring binders. So you see here that I have one set up for every year of my daughter's high school years and even as she went into community college. The second step down from the notebooks are different sections. That would be like if you had divider pages inside of your three ring binder. So you see here that I have a planner section for schedules and things. And then uh, these others are all the classes that she took. So American literature, US history, algebra, botany, etc., etc. Those were all the classes that she took during her freshman year. The third step down, all the way over here on the left, is uh, pages. So those are pieces of paper that you would put behind the dividers in the three ring notebook. Okay, so that's kind of how the, the thing is organized. The whole one note is organized with notebooks, sections, and pages. Now let's take a deeper look into how this might help you with schooling. One of the very first things that I always did was I would create a master schedule. And so you see here an example of our master schedule for the 2012-2013 uh, school year. Our classes were an hour and a half long, so we did double block planning. Um, so that that gave the students more time uh, to dive deeper into what they were learning. And you see here that her classes went all the way into the evening. She was involved in a number of arts activities in the evening and we included those as part of her schooling uh, because she was homeschooled. The second page that I want to show you is the course description page. Now this looks very blank and very simple in its empty form. But that's okay, it has some very important information in it. Uh, let's show you one that's filled in. Okay, so you do see here, this one course description uh, is filled in for the literature class that she was taking that year. You see that I have listed uh, the name, uh, her grade level of the year, the title of the course, uh, how many credits it was. It was for one high school English credit and her class hours. She had 72 class hours, two hours per week, and then 144 hours of home study. So that was four hours per week that she had to do. So a total of six hours per week for work on this particular class. You see, I included a picture of the um, textbook that she was using as well as uh, the title and all of that. Then other books that we read. I'm sorry, my mouse is, is giving me a problem today. So you see here um, the information about the book and then other books that we read, uh, the poetry unit that we did, the nonfiction speeches that we studied, and the drama unit that we did on the Secret Garden and the Glass Menagerie, all related to American literature. Uh, for vocabulary development, she used Wordly Wise 3000. 
and an SAT prep book because of course you got to do those SAT tests, right? Um, so that's uh, what the thing, that's what the course description page looks like filled out. This information is very helpful, especially if you have to do a transcript or you're filling out applications for college and that kind of thing. So it's always good to have all of this information in place as soon as the school year starts. As soon as we made decisions about what curriculum books we were going to use, we went ahead and filled this page out. Moving on to U.S. history, you see here, again, let me zoom in so that you can see that. You see here, same information. Uh, here's the uh, textbook that we used. Actually, in this class, she used two different textbooks and the course description. This class was 54 hour class hours and 108 home study hours for one history credit. So the course description was important um, but we also had a course overview where we would talk about um, the book that was used, who the tutor was, what materials would be needed, a brief description, and then any field trips that we planned to take related to that particular class. We live in the D.C. metropolitan area and there are so many uh, field trips that are right in our back door related to U.S. history and government and the arts and, and basically every subject because it's a large metropolitan area. So we would always take as many field trips as possible. The students were also required to make a timeline. I'm going to do a separate video about the timeline because that's too much information to talk about in this one video. But I think the timelines are pretty cool. You might like those. Another page that we kept in here uh, would be a page where she could do a summary or note taking. So this was an example of one of the pages that she did for uh, summary or note taking of the various chapters that we read. So you see, because OneNote is a note taking um, program, it's very easy to organize your notes, to highlight, and all of that kind of thing. So on and on and on, she could even uh, note in here things that she should carefully review for the test and that kind of thing. Okay, an example of an assignment that she might do is recorded here as well. So chapter 19, unit six, section one, and these are the questions that she would have to answer. There were vocabulary things that she had to do, questions to answer, charts to fill out. And then at the bottom here, this is an example of one of the assignment projects that we would do. Um, they were required to pick a time and location from this particular chapter that they were studying and they had to create, they had to pretend that they were a radio announcer because we had gone to the museum and we learned about um, Edward R. Murrow and his um, broadcasting. And so um, the assignment was for students to choose a time and location and then they had to write a script where they would interview someone and so that's an example of that. They performed them in class for us and uh, it, was really, it was really fun. They did a great job. At the end of every school year, uh, we liked to do, to do something that I called the Wax Museum. Now, if you've ever been to um, Disney World and you've seen the Hall of Presidents where the presidents are kind of animatronic right, figures that stand up and, and give a little speech about who they are and what they were, uh, as presidents. Well, we would do that with our historical fig figures. And so during this particular year, um, Samantha chose to uh, be Abigail Adams. And so she had a 10 page research project that she had to do um, about Abigail Adams and her time period um, and what her importance was in history. And then this little section down here, this little three paragraphs, is what she would write and the students all dressed up as the historical figure that they were and they sat in a certain pose and then someone would come by and they had some sort of device that they wanted people to, you know, ring a bell or press a button or, you know, touch their feather or something like that. Um, and then that animatronic wax figure would come to life and give them this three paragraph little speech about who they were and how they were important to history and so this is just an example that I put in here um, as one of the projects that she had to do during her schooling. One of the things um, about homeschooling 
is that every state and every county is different. So if you are somebody that's thinking about homeschooling, you need to check with your local regulations and find out what their requirements are. Some require you to keep a portfolio. Some require standardized testing. Some require both. Some require that you check in on a semester basis and some require that you check in uh, once a year. So it just depends on what your jurisdiction says. But one of the great things about doing your portfolio in OneNote is, especially during times like this when, you know, or maybe you live somewhere that's far away from the Board of Education, if you can do the portfolio review online with someone through a Zoom meeting or something like that, you can simply share your screen and show them all the work that your student's been doing. Now, of course, if you have younger children, there would be a lot more photographs and that kind of thing. And I could uh, go over a portfolio of a younger child with you if you would like. Uh, but I just want to give you an idea of some things that were possible, some things that might be of help for you in your thinking and your organizing for this upcoming school year. And if you think that you're somebody who uh, has some questions about that, I have 20 years of experience of homeschooling and I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions that I could for you. Well, I hear the thunderstorms are lurking in the distance, so I better wrap this up for tonight. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, schooling your children is one of the um, greatest pleasures that I've had in my life. and. Um, I wish you all the luck in your journey in being with your children and schooling them. Like I said, I'm always a little sad that I'm not part of this uh, community anymore of schooling, but if there's something that I know that I could help someone else with, uh, that would be great for me to be able to help you. So if you've learned anything today or if you've seen anything that you like, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. A like really is the best compliment that you can leave me. And if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to get back to you and answer um, as best as, as I can. Um, and if you'd like to learn more about what we do here at A Crystal Clear Life, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything. And actually at the very end of the video, if you just click on the picture of me, uh, that will let you subscribe. Um, I want to thank you for joining me today and uh, for all of those of you who are getting ready to start back to school. I hope you have a great school year filled with wonderful learning and until next time. Okay, bye.